I'll never forget the day I realized my garden soil was essentially a biological desert. I was digging a new bed and after 20 minutes of shoveling, I hadn't seen a single earthworm. Not one. That's when it hit me. Earthworms are nature's soil quality indicator, and their absence was screaming that something was seriously wrong beneath my feet. If you've been gardening in soil that feels lifeless, compacted, and unproductive, the missing earthworms are telling you everything you need to know about what's happening underground. Earthworms aren't just random creatures that happen to live in soil. They're sophisticated biological engineers that require very specific conditions to thrive. Think of them as the ultimate soil health barometer. When earthworms abandon your garden, they're responding to environmental conditions that have become hostile to their survival, and unfortunately, those same conditions are probably killing your plant's root systems too. Understanding what earthworms need reveals exactly why your soil might be failing. These remarkable creatures require consistent moisture levels between 40 and 60 percent, but never waterlogged conditions that drive oxygen from the soil. They need organic matter to eat, not just any organic matter but a diverse menu of decomposing materials in various stages of breakdown. Most critically they require soil with adequate air spaces and a pH between 6.0 and 7.0 because acidic or alkaline conditions literally burn their sensitive skin. When soil becomes compacted through heavy foot traffic, machinery, or just, you know, years of neglect, the air spaces disappear. Earthworms can't tunnel through dense, oxygen-poor soil and honestly they certainly can't survive in it. Similarly, soil that's depleted of organic matter really offers them nothing to eat. They're not going to stick around in a food desert any more than you would choose to live somewhere with empty grocery stores. Modern gardening practices often create environments that are toxic to earthworms, even when gardeners have the best intentions. Synthetic fertilizers, especially those high in ammonia-based nitrogen, create salt buildups that dehydrate earthworms on contact. Many gardeners unknowingly apply these fertilizers thinking they're feeding their plants, but in reality, they're actually creating underground dead zones where earthworms just can't survive. Pesticides and herbicides pose an even more direct threat. Even products labeled as safe often contain compounds that disrupt earthworm reproduction or, well, damage their digestive systems. Glyphosate-based herbicides, which are commonly used around garden beds, persist in soil and accumulate in earthworm tissues. Within a single growing season, regular use of these chemicals can eliminate entire earthworm populations from your garden. The pH factor cannot be overstated in its importance. Soil that's too acidic, often caused by acid-loving plant fertilizers or natural processes in areas with high rainfall, creates conditions where earthworms literally cannot survive. Their skin becomes damaged in acidic conditions, making them vulnerable to dehydration and infection. Conversely, highly alkaline soil, common in arid regions or areas with limestone bedrock, creates equally hostile conditions that send earthworms searching for more neutral territory. Learning to recognize the signs of earthworm absence helps you understand the broader health of your soil ecosystem. Dead soil doesn't just lack earthworms. It lacks the complex web of life that earthworms both depend on and help create. When you dig in healthy soil, you should see earthworm castings, which look like small piles of dark, granular material. These castings are actually some of the richest plant fertilizer on Earth, containing concentrated nutrients in forms that plants can immediately use. Soil without earthworms typically shows several telltale characteristics. Water tends to run off the surface rather than soaking in, because there are no earthworm tunnels to channel moisture deep into the soil profile. The soil structure lacks the stable aggregates that earthworms create through their feeding and tunneling activities. Instead, you'll find soil that either turns to concrete when dry or becomes muddy and waterlogged when wet. Plant performance in earthworm-free soil tells its own story. Roots really struggle to penetrate compacted earth, leading to shallow root systems that make plants vulnerable to drought stress. Nutrient deficiencies become common because the soil just lacks the biological processes that make nutrients available to plant roots. You might find yourself applying more and more fertilizer with diminishing returns, 
fighting a losing battle against soil that simply cannot support healthy plant growth. The first step in inviting earthworms back involves addressing the fundamental soil conditions that drove them away. This means stopping any practices that create hostile conditions and beginning the process of rebuilding soil biology from the ground up. If you've been using synthetic fertilizers, gradually transition to organic alternatives that feed soil organisms rather than bypassing them entirely. Testing your soil pH gives you critical information about whether chemical conditions are suitable for earthworm habitation. Most garden soils benefit from pH adjustment, either through lime applications to raise pH or sulfur additions to lower it. The key is making gradual adjustments over time rather than dramatic changes that shock the entire soil ecosystem. Earthworms prefer stability, and sudden chemical changes can be just as harmful as the original poor conditions. Organic matter addition forms the cornerstone of earthworm recovery programs, but not all organic matter serves the same purpose in attracting earthworms. Fresh grass clippings provide quick energy for soil organisms, but break down rapidly. Aged compost offers stable nutrition and improves soil structure. Shredded leaves contribute carbon that balances nitrogen-rich materials and creates the diverse diet that earthworms need to thrive. Once you've addressed the basic soil chemistry and structure issues, you can implement specific strategies designed to make your garden irresistible to earthworms. Coffee grounds from local cafes work exceptionally well as earthworm attractants. The slightly acidic nature of coffee grounds appeals to earthworms, and the fine texture makes them easy to incorporate into their diet. Creating earthworm-friendly microclimates accelerates their return to your garden. Earthworms need consistent moisture and protection from temperature extremes. Thick mulch layers provide both of these conditions while slowly decomposing to provide food. Organic mulches like shredded bark, straw, or aged wood chips create the cool, moist environment that earthworms seek, especially during hot summer months. Strategic watering practices make an enormous difference in earthworm populations. These creatures are most active during moist conditions, particularly in the early morning and evening hours. Deep, infrequent watering encourages earthworms to establish permanent tunnels in your soil, while light, frequent watering keeps them near the surface where they're more vulnerable to predation and temperature fluctuations. Earthworms respond quickly to targeted feeding programs that provide them with preferred food sources. Kitchen scraps buried directly in garden beds create concentrated feeding zones that attract earthworms from surrounding areas. Vegetable peels, fruit scraps, and coffee grounds work best, while avoiding meat, dairy, or oily foods that can create anaerobic conditions harmful to earthworms. Compost tea applications provide both earthworm food and beneficial microorganisms that support the broader soil ecosystem earthworms depend on. Creating compost tea is simple, steep, high-quality compost in water for 24 to 48 hours. Strain out the solids and apply the liquid directly to soil. This introduces millions of beneficial bacteria and fungi that earthworms need for proper digestion and soil processing. The timing of these feeding programs matters significantly. Fall applications of organic matter take advantage of earthworms' natural feeding cycles as they prepare for winter. Spring feeding supports rapid population growth as earthworms emerge from winter dormancy. Consistent feeding throughout the growing season maintains populations and encourages earthworms to establish permanent residence in your garden rather than simply passing through. Successful earthworm restoration shows measurable results within 30 to 60 days under optimal conditions. Start looking for earthworm castings on the soil surface, particularly after rain or watering. These small, granular piles indicate active earthworm populations processing organic matter in your soil. You might also notice soil that feels softer and more crumbly, evidence of earthworm tunneling and soil aggregate formation. Plant performance improvements often appear before you actually see earthworms themselves. Root systems develop more extensively in soil with active earthworm populations. Plants show improved drought tolerance because earthworm tunnels channel water deep into the soil profile. Nutrient uptake improves as earthworms process organic matter into plant-available forms. So, 
long-term earthworm management is really about maintaining the conditions that attracted them in the first place, rather than relying on intensive intervention. By regularly adding organic matter, avoiding harmful chemicals, and protecting your soil structure with minimal tillage practices, you'll be able to keep earthworm populations stable and productive. Just remember, earthworms are like long-term soil investors. Once they're established, they'll keep improving your soil structure and fertility for many years to come. Honestly, the transformation from dead, earthworm-free soil to vibrant, biologically active earth is one of the most rewarding achievements in gardening. When you start seeing earthworms coming back to your garden, it's a clear sign that you've rebuilt the foundation that supports all healthy plant growth. So have you noticed earthworms returning to your garden after trying out some soil restoration practices? Go ahead and share your earthworm success stories in the comments below and let us know which techniques worked best in your garden. And hey, don't forget to subscribe to Hydrohaven for more insights into building healthy soil ecosystems. Be sure to share this guide with fellow gardeners who are ready to welcome these incredible soil engineers back to their gardens.